Welcome back, everybody. We are live here in the Cube uh, from Las Vegas, the Cosmopolitan Hotel at .conf 2012. That's, of course, Splunk's annual user conference. Uh, we're talking about big data, machine-generated data, uh, finding uh, kind of nuggets in the gold of that data, if you will. Uh, my name's Jeff Kelly with Wikibon.org, and I'm here with my co-host, Jeff Brick from SiliconANGLE. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm, I'm glad to say we've been here in Vegas for a couple of days, and we've and uh, you know we had sun, now we have rain. But now we finally have somebody that's uh, a little bit more Vegas-centric. We've got a, a company that's in, in gambling and money and lots of fun stuff, the Swiss Lottery. So we're happy to welcome Joris Buffery to theCUBE from Swiss Sauce. Yes. Uh, it's great to have you here. And uh, I, know, I know the, the gambling uh, profession or the gaming profession before it was actually shooting people and running around in COD <laughs> uh, used a lot of big data yeah. and, and was at probably ahead of the curve in analyzing data for, for trends and what people are doing and how they react and which machine do they play. So, um, welcome to theCUBE. Curious Thank to hear you. about what you're doing and how Splunk has changed your business. Oh, uh, good question. <laughs> so, um, Why don't we yeah. first start off with what do you, what are you, what do you guys do? Tell us about uh, kind of uh, Swiss Laws, what you guys okay, so uh, do, and we'll go from there. We're, the, we're actually we're up to the Swiss lottery, uh, selling lotteries, uh, instant ticket, ticketing, and um, our bets as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have 6,000 point of sales in Switzerland and uh, 400,000 online users on our internet platform. We have our, our own internet platform for gaming, online gaming, uh, instant tickets on the sports as well. And, um, oh, on sports as well? Yeah, yeah okay. sport. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, to have happy customers because we are actually a non-profit organization. Okay. So uh, we, we are not allowed to make profits. The world profit go, goes back to, to the Swiss folks. Um, they, they have to use it for sport, for art, and uh, for, for good, uh, how do you say that? Good, uh, for good? Yeah, for Just good. for good. Yeah, for good, <laughs> that's, that's it. For the common good, for funding. For the uh, common good, Finding right. those kind yeah. of uh, uh, activities that benefit the society, yes. society as a yes. whole. Okay. So if you play uh, in our company and you lose, uh, it's not bad because, you know, it's for, it's for the common good. It's for the good, yeah. yes. Good, very nice. So tell us about your role there. What? I'm uh, in charge of the network team. Okay. And uh, since the beginning of September, uh, the system management team as well. So uh, a lot of stuff to do now. So, uh, it's very interesting because we have uh, uh, three uh, three thousand of our point of sales are online, They're connected to a, to a central in Basel in Switzerland. So we have to monitor that. We have to, to check that everything is uh, okay and. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of work to do because we also have very small teams. Okay. We're a small company with uh, 200 co-workers, and only 30 are working in the IT. So, it's, it's <laughs> that's so that's that's a, that's not many people no, that handle no, no, quite no, a complicated no. system. It sounds yeah. like. So talk to talk us to us a little bit about um, kind of how you came to work with Splunk. I mean, it sounds like yes. uh, maybe dig into some of the challenges you had because it sounds yes. like with especially with such a small team, you've got a yes. you've, you've got a big job in terms of understanding how the network is operating. Yes. Any potential probably some security issues. Yes. Uh, so. Dig into that a little bit for us. Yes, we, we don't have time to check at our logs every day, so we have to, <laughs> to have a tool to do that for us. So um, the, the most problem that we have is that we are we are known brand in Switzerland, so our internet platform is attacked daily. So we have to, to, to trace attacks, to find attackers, and to, to block them uh, as soon as possible. And we have to make sure that our uh, gaming systems are online 24 hours, seven days. Uh, because uh, if people can't play, we are losing money. So every downtime is related with losses. So we have to make sure uh, the money come in and people are happy to happy to play and to and to win as well, of course. Right, right. <laughs> and um, what we had before, we had a Tivoli Enterprise Console from from IBM, and uh, that was our event management system. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, we had that for ten years, and um, so this product was end of life and. Uh, we, our internet platform was outsourced and we took it back in our data centers. Okay. So we generated a lot more logs and wanted to, to show, so to dig in that logs to find out uh, what we could uh, improve in our platform. And um, we, we then searched for, for a new tool and um, we, evaluated, we evaluated a lot of tools like uh, RSA and Vision and uh, BMC products and uh, other, other open source tools and, um, Pat and Splunk. And um, Splunk was a, a good thing for us because uh, 
we, we tried to replace uh, Tivoli Enterprise Console mm -hmm. first and then uh, could do a lot more stuff with, with Splunk. Okay. Yeah. And when, when you were going through that process, I mean, part of the whole Splunk story and, and a lot of software companies now are, well, you know, here, yeah. take it, download it, load some data and, and, yes. and go crazy. So did you go through that process and just find it was tremendously successful or did you go through more of a formal kind of old school you know, kind of RFP, feature functionality, shootout, uh, that, uh, that kind of process. We, we defined a, uh, one first use case to, to implement Splunk uh, in our data center, mm -hmm. and that was to replace Tivoli Enterprise Console and to do one to one exactly the same that we were doing for uh, with uh, Tivoli Enterprise Console. Okay. So we, we first found a partner, LC System in Switzerland, to, to do that, and uh, they helped us to, 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 to get the best practice how to use Splunk and to, to to shorten this learning curve that you have when you, you buy such a, such a product. And um, we make one day workshop and uh, then everything was clear what we had to do. Oh wow. And it took six days to replace Tivoli Enterprise Console. So we, we had thousands of lines of code that we had uh, written in, in Tivoli Enterprise Console, rules, classes, a lo lot of stuff. And uh, we could we could um, make that so make the, the, the change from Tivoli Enterprise Console to Splunk in six days. Yeah. Wow, ten That's years amazing. and then uh, six, six, yeah, days. Yeah, six yeah, days. It's amazing. It's I a know. new world, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, so so characterize some of the I guess the challenges and opportunities like creating all this data, bringing your your, oper your internet operations back in house. Uh, you know, you you realize you're creating all this data. So obviously, on the one hand, it's a challenge. Uh, yeah. you, Certainly, there are you know compliance issues you've got to worry about. There's you know the cost money to store the data. On the other hand, it's an opportunity. Now yes. you've got all this data, and maybe we can find some ways to improve our business. Yes. So kind of how did you how do you how did you view the problem? Was what, did it and did it change as you kind of uh, evolved and, and started using Splunk and some other other technologies? Yes, it it, uh, it was actually a uh, lot of benefits for us because it was not scary to 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 have all the data and to mm -hmm. to have to store them, and uh, it was actually fun with Splunk. To dig in the data, to find what our, what our user had for problems, and to, to try to fix that. So we're we're doing a lot of security stuff as well. And after we when we we were finished with the tech, uh, the tech, uh, how do we say that? Uh, implementation. <laughs> yeah, implementation to, yep. to, to change tech. Um, we had a lot of experience with with Splunk, and we could make a lot of use case and other use cases with with fun and, and find out uh, actually what for IDs we could have with Splunk in the future. So it was, it was very interesting. So we made a lot of security, security stuff with, with Splunk to find okay. out who, are, who is attacking us. Okay. Who's trying to, to steal data in our, <laughs> in our databases <laughs> and stuff like that. So it, it wasn't scary at all. It was, it was either uh, fun. Interesting. I imagine with the, you know the lottery, there's uh, people who are going to want to. You're going to see some bad guys essentially that are going to want to hack in there. So tell us about some of the, the security specific use cases because we hear a lot about uh, kind of there's two kind of core uses we're seeing. Yeah. People start with Splunk kind of monitoring the IT environment, yeah. but also the security. So yeah. well, tell us about some of the unique things you're doing in security wise. So um, the first thing we're, we're tracing all firewall logs in, in Splunk. So we have we have uh, we have not only one firewall appliance as you can imagine. We have more more lines of defense in our in our internet platform. So we have we have front end firewalls, we have web application firewalls, we have uh, the second line firewalls. And uh, what we're doing, we're trying to correlate all those logs because it's multi vendor of course. So we have to, we have to correlate those multi vendor logs in in one GUI or one one big log to find out if if we can find some some behavior, some right. some suspicious behavior. And also the, the web server logs, so Apache logs, for example, to correlate that with, with firewall logs or web application logs to find out if someone is trying to make some, some slow attacks and scan, uh, scan our servers or, or, or uh, so everything they can, DNS or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you don't you don't use Splunk to, to keep the kid from just going down to the uh, the copy shop and writing in the winning numbers no. on his ticket no, and, no, going, no. and going to the store. No, no. <laughs> Yeah. So, so you mentioned a lot of security stuff. Yeah. What, in terms of actually growing the growing the lottery, growing the usage of people, is, is, is Splunk helping you there? And, and also, yes. I'm curious. Uh, I don't know that we have online lottery here. I guess I haven't played lately. You know, you got to go down to the to the local five and dime and, and buy your tickets. Yeah. Is, is the, how is the online uh, presence of the games impacted or is impacting kind of the retail? 
uh, participation in the game is in is that an interesting conversation? Yeah. So uh, nowadays, so today, it's, it's um, we we are selling 10% of our tickets in, in the internet, but it's growing. Okay. And of course, the internet is generating a lot more logs. So so right. it's, that's that's. Uh, that's also an, opportun an opportunity to know what our customers are, are doing, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, uh, we are, we are trying to to improve the, the user experience on our okay. web platform. So we can also trace that in Splunk to know how many login failures do we have, how many uh, reset pass password reset requests do we have. Okay. Correlate that. Of course, the whole thing is correlated with our jackpots because when we have big jackpots, people are trying to play more. Right. And uh, yeah, we, we, we're trying to. To do uh, to give the user a better experience on our, on our platform, and uh, what we'll, we'll do in the future, we will have more games and okay. more user activity, or, or also uh, between the users, they will they will have the possibility to chat. So we will have to, to monitor that as well, right. as to to show what's going on on those platforms. So so right now, is it pretty much one game, and then in the future potentially you have different games that appeal to different people, well, and you can A/B test and those kind of things, or we, is it we, mini we games? Have, we have a lot of games. A well. lot of games. You, you okay. can play all, all of our games uh, on, online, so okay. lotteries, sports games, and uh, instant tickets. You can play them online as well. So okay. we we are trying to to make all of our games available on, on the internet if it's possible of course no that's that's uh, yeah. that's wild yeah because that's you know as you as you grow obviously uh, the internet side of the business that's going to create as you mentioned a lot more yeah log data a lot more machine generated data so again challenge but also an opportunity to kind of find new insights and to actually you'll have even yeah. deeper metrics that you can go to when you're looking to kind of market your game or, or other yeah. other kind of business activities you want to do yes. uh, but it's also scaling it's scaling issue yeah. so uh, how from uh, from that Perspective: are, are you planning to kind of tackle that as you start to increase the, the amount of data you've got? You've got to store it. You've got a, you yeah. know, you've got a tool like Splunk to help you mine it. Yeah. Uh, what are the impact of this kind of big data explosion we're seeing on your organization? So of course we have to plan new storage and stuff like that. But uh, we planned it uh, for one and a half year, so I hope we will we will, <laughs> we will have, be able to deal with the data for the next four years. But uh, uh, we are we are tr thinking now of. Uh, Buying new Splunk licenses to to bring more data because what we what we've seen is that uh, our manager also like to see dashboards mm -hmm. and uh, what we, we're trying to to put business data now in Splunk to see how we're selling, how well we're selling, why we are not selling well or stuff like right. that. So that's that's actually one of our next business case to have more business data in Splunk and uh, find out why the sale went well or, or not. So. Right. Mm -hmm. And how did the business guys discover that they could do that? They just looking over your shoulder, looking at that report. No, no, no. Can I get can <laughs> no. I get uh, can I get one of those on my desk? Or actually, it's uh, it's most of the time it's where it's when we have problem with the platform, okay. and then they are they are most of the time amazed how quick we can fix the problem and find out where the problem is. Okay. And they're they're asking our developer as well are, are asking every day how do you find that so so quickly? And we said yeah, it's blank. So look at this. And, oh. There's an anomality here, so and we can we can point the anomality with a finger and say, okay, it's here, and, and they, they they learned to to know Splunk works when when we have problems. Right. Yeah. So I'm sure you still have plenty of challenges around uh, you yes. know, drawing correlations. What are the, some of the things you're gonna gonna be looking at going forward uh, that you, you hope to tackle? Either with Splunk or other tools, uh, but some of the what are your kind of pressing issues? Maybe the next six, twelve months that you, you're hoping to tackle. Um, oh, good question. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> so what we've done to, for for or try to do is to, to monitor all of storage to know when we have ICU in there. So, so that's the kind of stuff. And um, we, we would like to know exactly what our customers are doing. So maybe to trace behavior, click behavior, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like this, and to to be able to to to, to make our web platform uh, easier to use. That's, that would be the next big challenge that we will have. Okay. Great. Well, we hope you'll come back to the Cube and uh, let us know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Thank right. you. <laughs>
Well, thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Uh, we are here, of course, live at DotConf, uh, Splunk's user conference, live in Las Vegas at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. I'm Jeff Kelly with Wikibon.org. I'm here with my co-host, Jeff Frick from SiliconANGLE. Yep, and uh, it's fun to, fun to finally talk about a little gaming here, here in Las Vegas. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and again, and I, I, I forget who I was telling gaming, oh, like Call of Duty or uh, EA. No, no, like real gaming. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yep, we're here live. We're going cover to cover. We've got a few more great guests lined up for tonight. We've got a full slate for tomorrow, so we hope we'll stay with us. Stay with us, and we'll be back in just a few minutes with our next guest. Thanks a lot, Doris. Thank you, Jeff and Jeff. <laughs>